longtime Major League pitcher, a special with the Detroit Tigers and member of the 1984 World Series champions, Milt Wilcox, who we met in kind of an interesting way. We were here at the Andersons and Maumee to cover the ultimate air dogs and who was doing the color commentary and involved in the operation none other than Milt Wilcox. How does an ex-Major League pitcher get involved with the ultimate air dogs? Well, I went from throwing Major League Baseball to throwing Major League uh, dog balls is what I went to. But uh, I saw it on television. I got involved in it. My dog's name is actually Sparky Anderson Wilcox. And uh, just got involved with it and thought it would be a great sport to uh, end my career with, I guess, uh, going into another career and started dog jumping. And now we go around the country and do it, Greg. As far as your baseball career, everyone around here remembers you as a member of the Tigers. Growing up in the Dayton area in that time, I remembered you, first of all, as a member of the Big Red Machine. You actually went to two World Series under Sparky Anderson with the 70 Reds and the 84 Tigers. Yeah, exactly. I was lucky enough to come up with the Cincinnati Reds organization, which I still think is one of the best organizations in baseball, and they have a long and storied history. And I was lucky enough to go up there and play and be part of the uh, Johnny Bench, Pete Rose, Tony Perez, Lee May, Tommy Helms era. And it was a great era, great time in baseball. And uh, I was I just, it was too bad that I didn't get to finish my career there. I really wanted to play there, but arm surgeries and problems that I had in my career and everything else uh, ended up getting me to the Detroit Tigers where I spent almost 10 years and uh, ended up winning a World Series there. You came to Cincinnati in September of that 70 year where they really had the pen at all but locked up at that point but you did pitch in the playoffs and the series and you told me a really interesting story about the 70 World Series in the fifth game where you almost were the starting pitcher apparently. Yeah after the fourth game which we lost we were down three to one uh, Sparky walked up to me and says you're starting tomorrow night's game you know I'm a 20 year old kid going kind of going to pitch a World World Series game. It really didn't bother me that much. Of course, I didn't get much sleep that night. But uh, when I got to the ballpark the next day, he had changed his mind and said, hey, we're going to start Jim Merritt instead. And of course, I was a little dejected. And, you know, we ended up getting behind. You know, we, we got ahead in that game. Then we got behind. And then uh, I came in and pitched two innings and did very well. But um, yeah, I was supposed to pitch the, uh, the last game and then they didn't let me. And then Earl Weaver about 20 years later said, you know what, we were really hoping you wouldn't pitch that game because you were the only pitcher on that team that we really thought could shut us down. So that was kind of a compliment from a Hall of Fame manager. A left-hander and a guy who may be an unknown commodity a little bit for them. Well, fast forward to, to Detroit, and you were mentioning to me that maybe for Sparky Anderson, that was a real special thing for him because unlike in Cincinnati where they already had a great ball club when he came in to manage, he really built the Tigers into that great championship team. Yeah, and I think what happened is that Sparky had a chance to build the team that he really wanted, the team, the Sparky Anderson team. You know, he took over from a team in Cincinnati that Dave Bristol had basically built. And uh, they couldn't get it over the hump there, and that's the reason they brought Sparky in. And, of course, they did very well with Sparky at Cincinnati. But when he went to the Tigers, we had, had a bad team. Not many good first-round draft choices. The team was on its way down, and Sparky stepped up in there, built the team his way because it was his way or the highway. I don't know if you remember that. But it's going to be my way or the highway, and a lot of guys went the highway way. Yeah, he was known as Captain Hook, that's for sure. A lot of members of the Tigers from 84 that I had a chance to speak with earlier at a fantasy camp, they basically said that the 84 Tigers was a great thing. There was a great sense of community with the city of Detroit, much like the 68 clubs. Yeah, it was, and that's the way you are in Detroit. You know, Detroit is a blue-collar town, and, and we were a blue-collar baseball team. Sparky always told us, you know, you have to respect what you do and, you know, don't take for granted what you have. You know, it's a it's a honor to be a Major League Baseball player, and we all kept that same way. We talked to the fans. We connected with the fans, and I think that's what you have to do in Detroit. Well, it's obviously not been forgotten, judging by all the people here in Toledo that came asking for your autograph. They still remember. Thanks for being with us. Okay, thank you very much, Greg. Milt Wilcox from the 84 World Champion Detroit Tigers. Greg Frank here for BCSN.